Today, let's talk about pear production. So, what is pear production? Before that, in 1928, Dirac combined two theory, which is quantum mechanics and special relativity, and he was able to come up with an equation that described completely about the electron. From this equation, he was able to predict the existence of anti-electron that we call positron. Positron has similar properties as electron. However, the difference between both of them are the charge. Where electron has negative charge, the positron has positive charge. In 1932, Anderson did the experiment that is called pair production, and he was able to prove the existence of positron. So let's dig deeper about pair production. In pair production, gamma ray will be collided with the nucleus, and electron and positron will be ejected with some kinetic energy. So let's say gamma has energy hf, E equal to hf. Nucleus, initially there is no energy because nucleus are not moving. And electron will have kinetic energy K minus and also together with it rest energy because we, get, we assume that electron move approaching the speed of light. Positron will have kinetic energy K plus and also rest mass energy. So if we apply the conservation of energy, which is energy before equal to energy after, we will get something like this. Before the interaction, only gamma has energy. So that's why we only have HF here. So after the interaction, the nucleus will move a little bit. So nucleus will have a little bit kinetic energy. So Me minus C squared is the rest mass energy of electron. Me plus C squared is the rest mass energy of positron. K minus and K plus is the kinetic energy of electron and positron respectively. Kinetic energy of nucleus. We can neglect it because the movement of nucleus is not too significant so we can ignore the term kn which is the kinetic energy of nucleus if you look this thing m e minus is the mass of electron m e plus is the mass of positron but we we'll already see that positron and electron has similar properties okay which is the mass will be the same the shape will be the same the difference with it's only the charge okay so mass of electron and mass of positron are the same and let's recall me so we can combine these two terms to become 2 mec squared plus k minus plus k plus okay so what so let's calculate what is the minimum energy required to produce electron and positron okay so what is the minimum energy of gamma needed to produce both electron and positron so we still use this equation hf equal to 2 mec squared plus k minus plus k plus okay so to, to calculate this minimum energy we must set kinetic energy of electron and positron is equal to zero why because to just to just produce electron and positron that doesn't mean we need to make both of them move with some kinetic energy so we just set kinetic energy equal to zero so this is the minimum requirement energy just to produce electron and positron. So if we set these two terms is equal to zero, HF will be HF min. Or we can say it E min, the minimum energy required to produce both of them. And HF min is equal to 2 mc squared. And this term, this value is actually constant, which is we can put in value mass of electron and speed of light. And then we get this kind of value 1.64 times 10 to negative 13 joule. If you convert it into electron volt, we will get 1.02 mega electron volt. And we can also calculate the minimum frequency needed to produce electron and positron. So now we come to the question why positron cannot exist for a long time? Okay, we know. We don't know, but the lifetime of positron is only 1.125 picosecond, which means the value is 1 to 5 times 10 to negative 12 seconds. So this is lifetime of electron. We are not able to count it either. Okay, so 
Before we answer this question, let's look about electron positron annihilation. Annihilation process is actually opposite to the pair production process. In annihilation process, electron and positron, when they hit together, they combine together, they will produce two photon. Okay, so electron combined with positron will produce two photon. So why positron cannot exist for a long time? The reason is, in the world, there are so many electrons, okay? Which is so many electrons exist in the world. So that means, when gamma hit the nucleus, it will produce electron and positron. But in the world, there are so many electrons. So what happened to the positron? Positron will hit any of the electron exist in the world and then produce two gamma. So that annihilation occur. So that's why positron can exist for a long time. So that's all for me. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.